Parent Patent-Free Library. Welcome to our virtual author visit with Katie Copens. She has the same name as me, Katie and Katie, but she's Katie Copens. She writes books that explore writing and science, and she'll be talking about her book series, The Acadia Files. And you'll find out about her writing process. She's also going to share an experiment, so make sure you have your things with you. You need your empty containers, two empty containers, preferably plastic, please. You'll need a pencil, some colored pencils or crayons, and your grab-and-go supplies, which I saw some people already have, which is awesome. My job is to be the moderator. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure that the technology is working as well as it can be. And I'm gonna watch the clock and monitor the chat box. So if you guys have any questions, it's best to put them in the chat box. And at the end, I'll take some of those questions and I'll ask them to Ms. Copens for you. So it's best to have your Zoom on mute so everybody can hear Ms. Copens and um, also to have your screen on speaker view. Sound good? All right, without further ado, let's give Ms. Katie Copens a warm welcome. All right, well, first I wanna thank Katie so much for inviting me in the patent-free library. I'm really excited for this author visit. Originally it was gonna be scheduled in March and we ended up postponing it with everything. So I'm so happy that we're able to do it. And I hope you do have questions. And if you do, feel free to put those in the chat. Um, at the end, we'll definitely have time to answer questions either about writing or about geology, some of the science that we're going to do today. And I love seeing that some of you already have your safety goggles on and that you're ready. All right. So, no. okay. So who am I? Um, I am a teacher. So I was actually teaching from home today. Wednesdays are where I work, are at home day. Um, this is a picture of me in my classroom. I am a science and an English teacher, and I teach sixth grade. And I am also a mom. So I have a daughter who is a second grader and a daughter who is a kindergartner. In addition to teaching, I also have the awesome ability to kind of teach kids everywhere with the books that I write. And it's such an honor to do that. Um, my very first kids book ever was called Geology is a Piece of Cake. Now, how many of you like rocks or minerals or fossils? Can you raise your hand if you do? Okay, how many of you like cake? Well, this book brings the two concepts together by teaching about rocks, minerals, and fossils by using um, cake as a way to teach it. And there's also recipes throughout the book. After this book came out, they asked me to do a companion book called Geometry is as Easy as Pie. And kind of a similar idea, but this one uses pie and pie recipes to teach uh, different um, concepts in geometry. Um, and then there's the Acadia file. So all four books are out right now. The book we're going to be focusing on today is the first book in the series, and there are four set over each of the four seasons. And Acadia is a fifth grader who lives in Maine, um, and it's fun kind of seeing her year, year of discovery and curiosity over the books. And then my most recent book to come out is actually my first one that I co-authored. I co-authored this with Dr. Grant Tremblay, who's an astrophysicist at, um, at Harvard, and it's a book where it's actually in question and answer form. And the questions first came from my students and I had them think really outside the box. And uh, it's really funny. Uh, the questions they ask and just how amazing the science is behind questions that seem kind of silly. Um, and the whole thing is a conversation between an astrophysicist and a child. So to start, I wanna give a sense of my writing process. And my writing process is pretty similar for all of my books. Um, and this is called a pie chart or a circle graph and it's a way to show you the amounts of time about that it takes me for each step in the process. So the first part here, this wedge that's blue is thinking of ideas. And I always have so many ideas. I have the start right now of probably 10 different books going, um, but how I know it's a really good idea if I can't stop thinking about it. It's almost like the shadow that follows me wherever I go. Sometimes I even dream about it. Um, so if I, I feel like it's a really strong idea, then I start to really dive in and work on it. So you can see this red section says the first draft, and that is a whole lot of writing. And when I write a first draft, I am very kind to myself as a writer in that I'm not thinking about, is this the best possible word I could use? Should I go back and rephrase this? When I do a first draft, I just write. 
I write and write and write. And I just try to get it from my head to paper. So whether it's with um, using a pencil or most of the time I'm typing on a computer, but a first draft is just an opportunity to get that um, information out as much as I can. And then the next section is the yellow one, which is editing and revising. So this is when I do go back through and I always read my writing out loud because that helps me hear how it sounds, especially with a book like the Acadia Files that has dialogue, it has people speaking in it. Um, so this process has quite a bit of um, work with it of changing and rearranging things. And then for me as a writer, I really like to get feedback from people. So I get feedback from adults, um, often people who have a science background, but I always get feedback from kids. So for the Acadia files, I had four, they're called beta readers who give you feedback. I had four beta readers and I had them go chapter by chapter and give me something called two stars and a wish. So two things they liked in that chapter and one wish they had for it. And out of the feedback between the kids and the adults, the, the kid feedback was so awesome. Um, it made me laugh, it made me smile and it, it made the book so much better. So after that point, I go back and I do more editing and revising based on what they said. And then I do something kind of funny. I actually set it aside for at least two months and I don't look at it. And I try to work on some other project. And then after those two months, I take it out and I read it from beginning to end. And if it needs work, then that's when I go back and kind of start editing, revising again. And I don't try to get it published until I can read it all the way through and it feels um, fully polished. It feels ready to be submitted to a publisher. So after that point, you write something that's called a query letter. A query letter, you can either try to get an agent, which an agent is someone who represents an author. I don't have an agent. Or you can reach out directly to a publisher. And so in this letter, you describe uh, your book idea. You say who you are, who you think the audience is. And then something happens. Well, something happened for me. I got a whole lot of rejection. I got a whole lot of no's. So I was reaching out to agents. I was reaching out to publishers. I had a lot of different books. I had Geology Piece of Cake. I had the Acadia Files. And I heard no a lot. And so a big part of my writing process is grit. Grit means that part within you that doesn't give up. So if it's learning how to do the monkey bars and just you keep going and going and going, or if it's working on reading or soccer or learning an instrument, that part of me was strong to keep trying. So I want you to think right now, how many times I heard no from either an agent or a publisher before I heard yes. So if someone's in the room, can you tell them the number of how many times you think I heard no? Okay, I made a visual to show it. This is how many times I heard no. I heard no 80 times. And I think this visual is so important to see. Say at no number 64, I had stopped. I said, you know what, this isn't gonna happen. Would I be talking to you right now? I definitely wouldn't be. And I did these no's, some all caps, some lower caps, because some felt different. Like some might have been an agent I was really hoping to work with. Um, and I got a, a rejection, a no from them. But with every rejection, I believed in my project and I kept trying to work to make thing, the writing better and better. And then the magical day happened when I heard a yes. Well, it wasn't really a yes. It was a, we're interested. But in my head, it was, it's not a no, so it's a yes. Um, and at that point, then you um, either, I've had three different publishers that I work with. Some have been communications over the phone. Um, with the Acadia Files, it's uh, published by Tilbury House, which is in Maine. So I was actually able to drive up there and we were able to talk in person. And at that point, um, we shared different ideas for the book. Um, one thing that's interesting, when I originally wrote it, it was one long book with all of those chapters setting, taking place over one year. So that was when they shared their idea of having it be four books over the four seasons. And we kind of talked about different ideas. Um, they had mentioned um, their illustrations that they were hoping to have. When I originally submitted, I had really simple drawings, um, but they wanted it to be illustrated. And they talked about being in color, which was really exciting. And then we ended up um, agreeing and coming up with a contract. So it was this whole process from the time I signed the contract to the first book for the Acadia Files coming out. It was almost 18 months that passed. Um, so a whole lot of hard work and dedication, um, but it was so cool seeing it go from idea to book. So how many of you enjoy writing? How many of you? I, I love it. For my husband, he loves running. Running is that thing that he reflects. Um, it makes him kind of decompress throughout the day. It helps him calm down. For me, that's writing. I try to write at least one hour every day. 
So the three biggest pieces of advice I would give for you as a writer is definitely reading books, first of all. By reading, you get exposed to vocabulary, sentence structure, um, different writing styles, different approaches that authors might take. And then writing, of course, um, just like if you wanna be better at soccer, the more you play soccer, the better you'll get. And the next thing is observing. I'm always paying attention to the things people say, the way they act. And the Acadia Files in, protect, in particular is really strong about observations of nature. So what I'm gonna do now is kind of narrow into the Acadia Files itself and walk you through um, some of the process of that book before we do the activity from it. So the Acadia Files, as I said, is a fifth grader in Maine who has two parents who are science teachers, which is definitely influenced by the fact that I'm a science teacher who is married to a science teacher. And the thing about having teachers as parents, do any of you have teacher parents? If you have questions, they don't answer them. <laughs> Instead, they encourage you to find the answer. It's called inquiry. They encourage you to kind of discover and go through the process of learning. And so I had this idea for this little girl named Acadia who was just curious about the world around her. And her parents um, supported her curiosity, but didn't, didn't just tell her the answer. They helped her figure things out. So the very first chapter in the first book is called The Missing Blueberries. And where this came from, um, I grew up in New Hampshire. And when I moved to Maine, um, I, I moved to Maine pretty young. I was 22 years old. Um, and when I finally bought a house, the first thing I wanted to do was plant blueberry bushes. So in the backyard, I planted four different blueberry bushes and I was so dedicated to those bushes. I, I watered them, I took care of them, I made sure they had enough acid in the soil and I was watching and watching for those blueberries. And then one day, it was supposed to be the day I was ready to pick them and most of the blueberries were gone. And I immediately looked around and I thought, who stole my blueberries? And then pretty quickly I figured out what had happened and that was the idea for the first chapter. So if any of you have read it, the first chapter walks you through the scientific method and um, Acadia goes through a process to figure out uh, who or what took her blueberries. So that's how the whole thing starts off. And then from there, after that moment with the blueberries with me, I started just to pay attention uh, to the world around me and little moments that had a whole lot of science behind them. And then I still didn't have a character name. And this is kind of a cool story. As a teacher, I was in the hallway and I heard, um, someone walking down the hall and someone kind of holler her name, they said, Acadia. And she turned around and that's when I said, that's my character name, Acadia. And I didn't have the student, I don't know her, I couldn't pick her out of the lineup, but then it all started to come together in my head. Acadia, parents are science teachers. She has a dog, the dog will be Baxter after Baxter State Park and all of it just started kind of going from there. And then this idea of a whole year for her of science. So then um, part of being a science teacher, is I always have my kids um, make observations. We do lots of hands-on stuff. And that's what I thought could make this book different than other books. So at the end of each chapter, she has her science notebook where she draws about what she learns. Um, she does experiments from the chapter and she always ends with things I still wonder. So it's a book about being curious and kind of the science, um, the more you learn, the more you wonder. And so I wanted to have that tone of it. Someone said once, Acadia is kind of an ambassador for kids of, of science and being curious. And I love thinking about her in that way. So I got to work with an illustrator and this is the only book series that I've ever done with an illustrator. It's just so cool to see this idea of the science notebook and how it came together um, was absolutely awesome. So this is um, Acadia Science Notebook cover. And then in every chapter there are those experiments but there's also science words. Um, and she did just such a great job in how she visually showed things. Uh, it was great seeing the characters come to life of how she drew them. You can see this one on the right. This is a spot, if you look in the autumn book, book two, it almost looks like the, the leaves are pressed into the book the way she did the art for them. So it was just so cool for me to see um, the vision I had come together with her beautiful artwork. And the characters, um, the book only has five human characters, and then Baxter the dog. So we've got Acadia, um, her mom, her dad, Isabel is her best friend, and Joshua is her neighbor. And then for the experiments, um, and this kind of leads into what we're going to do next. So I really like the idea of coming up with experiments that kids could do at home, that they could replicate, and then hopefully get inspired by to do their own experiments. So if you have any questions before we jump into the experiment, um, please make sure you put them in the chat, especially if it's about the writing process or um, the Acadia files and coming up with the different stories and things like that. Okay, so what I'd like you to have out first is the notebook that you had in the kit. 
And I'm gonna give you about a minute um, to decorate the cover in some way. So right here shows you what Acadia's looked like. So she called hers Acadia's Science Notebook. Um, so maybe you write down your name and you say Science Notebook if you want to do that, or if you wanna make it your own thing, you can totally do that too. She had drawings of some different things around it. Some of these connect to the um, chapters in the book, some don't, like there's no robot in any of the chapters, um, but there is the water cycle. There are frogs, there are dinosaurs, there are shooting stars. Um, so whatever kind of makes sense to you. So take a moment, here's a model of one from an author visit I did that um, a student did. And if you have uh, color pencils, you can color them also. Okay, a little bit more and then if you're willing we're going to hold up our covers just so we can see what we did. All right, wherever you're at, and you, this is your notebook to keep, so absolutely you can keep adding to it. Do you mind just kind of pausing where you are and holding up your notebook so we can all see what they look like? And one of the best parts is they probably all look totally different. And that's what's awesome about this whole idea is like you're making the science notebook that is yours, that's gonna develop and change with you of the things that you're curious about. Okay, so now we're gonna open up to the inside page and we're gonna start our experiment. So all of you got to read um, the chapter about where sand comes from. And if you didn't, just the gist of the chapter is, Acadia is at the beach with her mom and they park their car and they're walking towards the beach and she notices the closer she gets to the ocean, um, the smaller and smoother the rocks get. And she's curious about how does sand form? Where does it come from? So she learns about something called weathering, which is the breaking down of rocks over time. And that's through things like um, waves crashing against rocks, kind of hitting them again and again against each other. And Acadia's mom has her find sea glass and uses sea glass to teach her about this idea of smoothing down over time. So then at the end of the chapter, Acadia's mom gives her some mica and gives her some quartz. And Acadia researches and finds there's something called the Mohs scale of mineral hardness. So the hardest on that scale is a 10, which is a diamond. And the softest on the scale is talc, which is almost like chalk and how soft it is. So she looks at her mica and she looks at her quartz and she does a little background research. She finds mica is about a two and a half, depending on what kind on the Mohs scale and quartz is a seven. So she wonders if quartz is that much harder, will it weather and break down slower than mica? So this is where we at. So for her experiment, she decides to put them both in a container and shake, 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 and see which one breaks down more. And that's what we're gonna do today. But before that, we wanna get some data. We wanna get some information on what they look like before we shake them. So you can see she took pictures of the before and then pictures of the after. So you've got that black paper, you can also do that or some other things you can do. In science, we often use things called Venn diagrams, which look like this where you would have one of the mineral names, which is quartz, the other, which is mica, and mica is the shiny one. Quartz is the one that's kind of white. And in the, mineral, in the middle, you would say what they have in common. Like you would say minerals or something they have in common. Something that you know is different are the Mohs scale and the mineral hardness, so about a two and a half, and then a seven. Or you could do the same thing. This is called a T-chart down here, where you could do bullets, so little dots, and describe them. They also have very different color and very different texture. If you look at that mica, I don't know if any of you have before mica, it's kind of fun to peel. It's in layers of how it builds up. It's also very metallic and shiny. 
uh, or quartz, sometimes they call them crystals, right? And how they look. So I'm gonna give you a moment to do um, a before of gathering some data on the different minerals of what they look like now. If you like drawing pictures, you could also draw a picture of what they look like before. Or if you have a camera, you could take a photo because they will look different after we're done. I'm gonna give you a moment for this. I'm gonna ask also that we hold up our, note, our notebooks just to see what you're doing for the before. And again, if you wanna take a picture, they both look really nice on that black paper. So again, focusing on color, texture, the differences between them. So what all minerals have in common is they are the ingredients that make rocks. So if you have, for example, mica and quartz and feldspar that get pushed deep down into the ground and melt into magma, they actually harden to become the rock of granite. So minerals come together, whether they're compressed or melted together um, to form rocks. So they are pure all the way through. So what that means, if you take a tiny piece of that mica off and you look at it, um, at the atomic structure of it, take another piece off and you look at the atomic structure, it's gonna have the same, same structure all the way through. Now quartz would have a different atomic structure because it's a different mineral, but it's pure all the way through. Or if I had a piece of granite and I looked at a little piece, it might have some mica, it might have some quartz, it might have some feldspar. It's not gonna be the same all the way through because it's made of a combination of minerals. So something else for this Venn diagram that you could say is pure all the way through. That's what makes it a mineral. So that is the difference between a mineral and a rock. Okay, can you hold up your page so we can see what it looks like of what you recorded for the before? So if you did a Venn diagram, if you did a drawing, can you hold it up so we can see that page of what you just did? Okay, see some of you holding it right to the camera. Oh, and you got a photo there. Oh, that's awesome. I can see some people, you hold your camera right to the, um... oh, that's so great. It looks so good on the black paper. Awesome. Oh, we got another picture on a phone there on the black paper. I'm gonna go, Phil, let me go back, let's see. Nope, it won't. Um, okay, so what we're gonna do now is I see a lot of you have your safety goggles on. If you don't, please put those on. Um, we're wearing those for two reasons. It's not just when we do the shaking, it's also gonna be when we open the containers. So let me go through all the directions first and it doesn't matter what kind of container you have, I just like it to be plastic. And the reason why is because these are rocks and like quartz is a seven on the Mohs scale. So it's really hard. If you shook really hard in glass, it could break. And we don't want that to happen. Even though we've got safety goggles on, we wanna be extra safe. So it is possible that the plastic may break, um, but it won't break with sharp glass. So in your containers, can you put all of the quartz and all of the mica and make sure the lid is on tight. And if it's small enough that you can hold it with your hands on both sides, you wanna do that when we shake and don't start shaking yet. Um, I don't want you to open it until I go over the directions for that. Cause that's actually the biggest reason why we have our goggles is cause when we open it, we're gonna make really fine sediment. Basically when we're shaking, we're fast forwarding weathering. So at the beach, it takes a long time to kind of churn in those waves again and again. Us shaking it really hard is gonna cause these minerals to break down. And our big question that Acadia has is, which one will break down more, quartz or mica? So I want you to think about that answer first before we do any shaking. So when we shake, you can do it sitting at your seat or Acadia in the book gets up and dances as she shakes, which makes it kind of fun. So we're gonna have a whole minute of shaking if you wanna do them both at the same time. So this is an experiment in that everything is the same except the one difference is the mineral type that we're using, okay? 
okay? And that's actually called our variable. It's the one change in this experiment. So if you wanna be like Acadia, you can get up and shake. I am going to set my timer for one minute. It is going to be loud because you're shaking uh, minerals. If you want to grab headphones, if noise bothers you, um, you can put those on first before you do the shaking, okay? So I'm gonna set on my phone right now the timer for one minute. I'll hold this up and I'll say when to stop. I'm gonna have to talk kind of loudly when I say to stop because it will be loud for you. Again, don't open them until I go through the process of opening. All right, give me a thumbs up if you're ready. Okay, I see a lot of thumbs up and I like seeing those safety goggles. All right, and how many of you gonna dance? It really is fun to dance and shake. All right, ready, set, shake. Keep them both going. The more you shake, the more they're gonna break down. Oh, I see some dancers. Keep going, you are at 30 seconds. You are halfway there, halfway there. Keep going, keep going. Keep causing weathering. You are fast forwarding weathering of these minerals. Okay. All right, we are at the final 10 seconds. Shake, 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 shake. You guys are doing awesome. And one. All right, there's our alarm. All right. So you can set those down. And then when you open them, you don't want to open it with your face right over because you might have a plume of really fine sediment comes out. It almost looks like smoke, but it's not. So you want to have your face away from it and open the container away from you. And then once you do that, carefully, you can pour it out over the black paper. All right, so do that for both the mica and the quartz. And if any of you are willing to move your cameras so we can see it over the black paper, that would be great. So we can see what it looks like. Oh, I see some people moving their cameras. All right, so some of you have sand there that you've got this really fine sediment. So this is when we're gonna stop and observe, but these minerals are yours to keep. So I want you to think if you put them back in the containers and you shook them more, would more weathering happen? Absolutely. So let's pause after one minute and go back to your notes and you're gonna add some observations of what they look like afterwards. So if you took pictures before, this is a great time to take pictures afterwards. I'm gonna give you about two minutes for observations of these. In that two minutes, if you really want to shake them more, you can put them back in the containers and shake them more. I'll have you do the timing yourself, but the more you shake them, the more they're gonna weather and break down. So you've got two minutes to either write some observations or if you wanna do more shaking, go for it. Oh, I see Amelia shaking. Okay, you've got about one more minute. So again, you can keep shaking, you can pour them out again, make sure you're careful when you open it. And then record some of the observations you can make about the changes. I would definitely touch them when you do that. Feel the way they feel and how they've changed. The mica I think looks like nature's glitter when it breaks down.
Okay, the next thing that's really neat to do is if you take a piece of tape and you go like this and you dip it into the really soft spine sediment for both of them, you could put a sample in your notebooks. And the reason why I do this is this part stays sticky and I'm just sticking it down here. And then you can have a sample in your science notebook. So if you wanna get tape, that can be a cool thing, but just get the finest sediment. That way you can still close the notebook. All right, I'm watching all of you work so hard, it's awesome. And again, all of this is yours to keep. So you can keep shaking them, you can keep doing more um, weathering, seeing how much you can get them to break down into finer sediment. You're also noticing probably that they're becoming smoother. They're becoming more rounded. Just like Acadia noticed when she was at the beach, um, up near the parking lot, the rocks were a little bit sharper. The closer she got down to the water, the smoother they got. And that's because of those waves hitting against them again and again. And when you go to the beach, if you ever take a handful of sand and put it in your hand and notice the different colors, that's because they come from different minerals or rocks. Um, and especially mica, that handful of sand, sometimes you see sparkles in the sand, that's gonna be the mica that you see. Okay, well, the next thing we're gonna do, and this will be our last thing before we take any questions. Acadia ends, every single chapter with this. Things I still wonder. So I have it written right here. On a the next page, can you write things I still wonder? And again, the book is all about being curious. And for me, um, as someone who loves science, the more I learn, the more I wonder. The more I make connections and the more I kind of ask how things happen. And it's just a big part of being curious. So for this same process that you just did, these are the things that Acadia put for things I still wonder. She said, how do minerals form? Does the way they form impact how hard they are? And her next one was, if I put the quartz in the container with the mica, would the mica have broken down even more because quartz is harder than mica? And that's something you could do. You could put the two in the container together and see what happens and shake them. And her last question was, are diamonds so expensive because they are a 10 on the Mohs scale of hardness? So maybe you have other questions. Um, I did an author visit once and one, one um, child said they wanted to put water in their container and see if they shook it, if the water changed the way that it um, weathered and smoothed down. I thought that was a great idea because that's kind of replicating the beach and the, the waves which carry the different sand and shells kind of pounding them against the rocks. And I thought that was such an awesome idea of an extension on this of something you could do. The other thing you could do is if you have um, or outside and find different rocks and minerals, you could do the same thing with them. You could shake them and see how they weather um, to learn more. So again, um, the biggest goal in this is to find yourself just kind of wondering questions, being curious and learning a little bit about the scientific process. And that is your notebook. And I strongly encourage you to keep doing things, whether they're from the book or your own idea, uh, ideas of things that you're curious about and a place to record and get them down. All right, so in the chat, if you have any questions, um, Katie is gonna be the, the proctor for those who will share those with me. Um, so again, it could be about the writing process. It could be about geology. It could be about what we just did, anything at all. Thank you. Yeah, I'm gonna stop yeah. sharing. Yeah, Katie, were there any questions? I'm gonna stop sharing so that way. I don't, I have one question. So okay. how did you learn about query letters and the whole process to go about getting published if you don't have an agent? That's a great question. So I've got two answers. So I actually read books about how to get published. Oh, okay. Isn't that so funny? Um, so there are books out. And I also went to a writing conference. 
So just like they have like dance camps and music and sports camps, this is kind of like a camp for writing. And that they have lots of tips. Um, there was somewhere where you could go and hear an agent talk about what they wanted, hear publishers talk. Um, and that was a great experience to get to do that. Yeah, wonderful question. Any others that you have, feel free to put in the chat, even about the geology of what we did. Do you want me to see if Avery has a question? She looked like she was raising her hand. She might not. Sure, yeah, and, and it's fine if they um, unmute. She might not have one, but um, she might be leaving. Okay. That might be one to Hi. Hi, thank Hi, you so much. Avery, you have a good one. <laughs> Um, so another question that I had, if I, I can wait till other people put in some questions to the chat room, but, uh, another question that I had was, have you always written or did you, did you write as a young child? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, interesting. If you had asked me as a child, I would have thought I would be an illustrator. Um, art has always been um, a really strong passion for me. And what's really cool about being a mom is I actually made the shift to writing when I became a mom. And the reason why is I love being creative. I love creative outlets. Um, all of the art I did was very, very messy. <laughs> and writing allowed me to kind of slow down, reflect. And I just had to close my laptop and put it away. And then I could open my laptop right back up. Um, when I was young, I actually, I. And I have it on my website. If any of you go to that, it's www.katiecopens.com. Um, I run a, won a writing contest when I was a kid in sixth grade, which was really exciting. Um, I got to have a, a story I wrote published in Archie Comics. And I was I won $10, which was really exciting. Yeah. Um, so that really helped my confidence as a writer. And I also won a young author's illustrating contest. Um, and I was younger. I think I was in second grade when I won that. And so those were little like little confidence boosts, but even if I hadn't won, it was more, I've always enjoyed being creative and making something. Mm -hmm. um, so my other books are nonfiction, but what I particularly like about the Acadia Files is I really enjoy writing fiction with science. I like creating characters and creating a world. Um, and so this I feel like is all parts of me. It's the teacher, it's the mom, um, it's the person being curious about science. So I feel like this series in particular really captures like who I am. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Did anybody else have some questions? Because I could just ask and ask and ask. You can unmute yourself if you do. Uh, so some people are noticing the, in the chat, the more they shake it, the more it's becoming smoothed down almost like a sphere, which is really cool. Well, that is cool. I'm sorry. You might be seeing more chat questions than I'm seeing for some reason. I'm sorry about that. That's okay. Yeah. All right. And if anyone wants to unmute and ask, you can feel free to do that also. All right. Well, the books are all, uh, you can see them behind Katie on the bookshelf over there. They have them all at the Patent Free Library. So I encourage you to check them out. Um, and thank you so much. Enjoy the stuff. Keep being curious. You've got your safety goggles now. You've got your notebook. And, and just have fun with the process. Yeah, all right. Thank you guys so much for coming. And thank you, Ms. Copens. Thank You're you welcome. so much. Mm -hmm. It'll be wonderful to have you again. And hopefully we'll get to see you in, you know, real the real world is so on the screens. It was really good to see all you guys. Thanks for coming. Bye, everybody. <laughs> Bye, you guys. So I'm going to end the meeting. And again, if you have any questions or if you want to reach out to us, just give us a call or send me an email. Thanks again. Bye. Is it meeting?